So I've said repeatedly that we rely on context to figure out what other people are saying or signing. Let me give you some examples. Here's an example from reading, which shows that context is very important. Your ability to identify a briefly flashed letter depends on whether that letter appears in a word, in other words, in a context, or by itself. In this study, in one condition, people saw either the letter E or the letter T flashed very briefly, and they were right about 60% of the time when they had to guess what the briefly flashed letter had been. But if you show, if you do exactly the same task, but you put a word in there, so E and T, um, but it could be plain or plant, but all, the task is the same. Did you see an E or a T? When the letter is in the context of a word, people are 20% more accurate. That's an example of context. I'm going to talk about another factor uh, called word frequency. But before I tell you about it, I want you to participate in this demo. Super easy, no paper, no pen. Just do this. You're going to look at the slides that I show and just look at each group of letters and tell me, is that a word in English or not? So it's just yes, no. You can yell it out. That's what I usually do in class. Or you can just say it quietly to yourself. But I want you to get this effect. Okay, so just look at the group of letters and tell me, is this a word in English or not? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yes. 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 No. Yes, no. You just participated in a word frequency experiment. Your ability to recognize whether a group of letters is a word or in English or not depends not on how long the word is, but how frequently you use the word or have seen the word. So you are able to do that task faster with words like develop, busy, and relief, words that we use commonly, then you were to do the same task with words that could even be shorter, but we don't use a lot like oriel or awry or crock. So I remember I said there's no dictionary in your brain of your lexicon because it's not organized by letters or alphabetically. It's organized by how frequently you use the word, which makes sense, right? On your desk, what will be closest to you is what you need frequently and works the same way in your brain with words. I also want to tell you a little bit about semantics, which is a study of meaning. Now, remember I said that words are symbols that a group of people agree on mean a particular thing. There's a very famous quote from Shakespeare in his play, Romeo and Juliet, and it says, what's in a name, that which we call a rose, by any other name would smell as sweet. In other words, you can call a rose a rose, or if we all agreed on it, we could all call a rose a bleh, right? Doesn't matter, the rose is still there. It's a symbol, words are symbols. Meaning, sometimes even when you're talking about written text, the meaning of a word or the meaning of the sentence is ambiguous. So context doesn't always help in a super direct way. So for example, if you ever watched the cartoon Superman, uh, he was based on this uh, meek guy, Clark Kent, and Clark Kent hears, oh no, Lois has been hypnotized and she's jumping off the bank. Well, where should Superman fly? A bank with money in it or the bank of a river? It's ambiguous, hmm? ambiguity in meaning. Now word order helps us out some, and here's an example, if I say, a dog bites a man, you think of this. If I say a man bites a dog, you think of that. Same words, exact same words, different order. So we reorder words, we come up with entirely different meanings. But syntax doesn't always clarify things for us and comics are wonderful at pointing this out. It's an old comic called Groucho Marx. He always had a cigar and he had this famous line that said, 
This morning I shot an elephant in my pajamas. And when he says that, I shot an elephant in my pajamas, you think of this. He waits a beat and then Groucho Marx says, how he got in my pajamas, I'll never know, right? So the meaning, that second sentence, entirely changes your understanding of the first sentence. So now Groucho Marx is shooting an elephant who is wearing his pajamas. It's not Groucho Marx who's wearing the pajamas, it's the elephant. Ambiguous. That's what makes language fun. That's it for lecture 20.